From 13 ABC Action News, this is Conklin and Company with 13 ABC's Lee Conklin and later Jeff Smith in touch. Now, here's Lee Conklin. Welcome back, everyone. Countdown is on to the first total solar eclipse the country's seen in a long, long time. Let's talk all things eclipse with our expert science guy, the Imagination Station's uh, one and only Carl Nelson. And Carl, yeah. it's great to see yeah. you. Huh? You I've too. seen you on TV before, but yeah. this is the first time uh, you, you've graced the, uh, the studio of Conklin & Company right with, now, with or at least the background that they put up every Sunday. That's right, with no chemicals and no uh, demonstrations. Right, and, uh, you know, we do have props, though. <laughs> we you do. did bring props, right? I mean, tell it, <clears throat> fever pitch now for the, for the eclipse here. We're excited it partnering is. with you guys. You guys are uh, presenting, helping to present our big show tomorrow, so we're Absolutely. excited to be part of it. Well, we're excited that, uh, you know, I'll turn that question sort of back on to you. When have you ever seen the general public so excited about a science topic. Uh, never. This is amazing. You know, we live and breathe the geekiness of science at the Science Center. But, you know, everywhere you look, it's eclipse, 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 eclipse. And it's such a great opportunity to start talking about, you know, the basic physics behind eclipses, how they happen, when they've happened, the history behind them, um, what is totality. It's just, it's, it's a rich topic with so much stuff to talk and about. And we can answer every question in about eight minutes. Yeah, here, right? exactly. Get it exactly. all figured out. You're the chief scientist. <laughs> you are a physicist, I right? Am. Yes. By trade. So, going into the science of a total solar eclipse. We're not going to get the whole uh, the whole thing here, but close to it, right? We'll get about 85% coverage here in the U.S., uh, here in Toledo, sorry. Um, in the path of totality, um, you know, you have a total eclipse lasting you know, several minutes. Um, but that's not to say that here in Toledo, it's not going to be an amazing sight. You definitely want to go out and experience it. You know, it, even though it's only 85%, you're definitely going to want to wear the glasses. Yeah, what, what makes it so dangerous? And Jay and I were talking about yeah. this before because you could go out and look at the sun, you know, briefly on a bright sunny day. Bad idea. Yeah, that's Don't a bad it. idea. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. But what makes looking into the sun covered up by the moon so dangerous? Well, well the problem is the, the sun is so bright that you, you have a natural aversion to staring at it. You take a look and you look away. When you put on something like a pair of uh, polarized sunglasses, um, it knocks down some of that visible light, but there's still invisible UV light that can damage your retina. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, if you were to look at the solar eclipse when it's not completely covered, not in totality, um, you may be able to look at it briefly. That UV light will begin a chemical process on your retina that won't be apparent until most likely the next day. Mm -hmm. You won't feel any pain, you won't feel any burning, because a lot of the ambient light has been knocked down, reduced in intensity. But you may wake up the next day with vision loss. It could even be blindness. Yeah. So, and it's a cumulative effect. You can't just like take a quick peek and look away. Take a quick peek and look away. It's like if there's one takeaway everybody should have is never look at the sun unless you have huh. solar eclipse glasses or you view it indirectly. Um, at the Science Center, we'll be showing people how to make pinhole viewers. Uh, so you can look at the sun indirectly and you'll image that uh, eclipse as it moves over the sun. You'll be able to view it safely without looking at the sun. Where are you going to be perched tomorrow? <sighs> We're going to be at the Science Center. Well, I, I know you'll be there, <laughs> but got... any spe spe special place where you'll be? <laughs> We've got so much going on. We've got food trucks. <laughs> We've got the Toledo School for the Arts coming down. They're going to do a drum corps uh, announcing the eclipse, something that people over the centuries have done, right? Banging on drums, making noise to try to drive the eclipse away. Um, the Metro Parks will be there with kayaks for the river. We've got First Solar coming down with a solar panel demonstration. Mm -hmm. ProMedica will be there talking about the damage that sunlight can do to your skin and why you should wear a sunblock. Um, we're making large solar cookers. We're going to try to fry some hot dogs mm -hmm. using the power of the sun <laughs> before we get into the eclipse portion of things. Um, just so much stuff going on. It's going to be a, a big festival, big party. Last uh, total solar eclipse uh, through the contiguous U.S. was 1918? Like 99 correct? years ago, yeah. Goodness gracious. But coming up, I think uh, Lori Hauser, uh, executive yeah. director of the Imagination yeah. Station, great analogy, said that we're on deck for the next big one. And that's we not are. That too, too far off, right? Seven years from now, in 2024, Toledo will be just on the edge, just inside that band called Totality, where the sun will be completely blocked out for us for roughly a minute and a half, two minutes or so. So it's, uh, that's going to be a, a spectacular event, if the weather cooperates mm. with us, of course. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that very, very much. What, what makes this uh, so special, and, and why why the difference in, in the variance in years between path of totalities, if you will? The last one was 1918. There was a, yeah. a one that was similar in 79, I guess. But people have been observing eclipses, both solar and lunar, for 
you know, 2,500 years, and they've been making records of when eclipses happen. And it's really interesting that, you know, 2,000 years ago, people could predict when the next eclipse would be, whether it's solar or lunar, simply by having done careful observations. Right. There's something called the sorrow cycle. If you're uh, at any given location when there's an eclipse, you know the date of an eclipse, lunar or solar, if you add 18 years, 11 months, and eight hours, Goodness gracious. there will be another eclipse. Now the tricky part is uh, a solar eclipse will probably have moved about a third of the way around the planet, may land in the ocean, may land somewhere mm -hmm. else, but an eclipse will happen. With a lunar eclipse, anybody on the dark side of the planet will see that lunar eclipse. So there's some really, you know, it's, it's interesting. People didn't understand the physics behind what was going on, but just by making careful observations, like they were doing science. Huh. You know, 2,500 years right, ago. Out of their it's time, amazing. a long way. There were some yeah. smart cookies back then as well. Yeah. Uh, but perhaps Jay should have joined us for this question because sure. I've heard that total eclipses could cause weather phenomenon down the road. Is that is that a wives' tale? Is it a myth? I, ju I just talked to Jay as well about that. Okay. And he said, you know, that the the eclipse is more of a local event, not so much a, a global thing. Yeah. Um, and so you may see a drop in temperature for sure. And that's something you should watch for if you're in the path of totality. And maybe even here in Toledo, I don't know, 85%, you may see a, a few degree temperature drop. But that's immediate, right? That's immediate. And because of right. you know, the sun is covered up, right? Correct. I mean, that just make, makes sense. But, but months later, the eclipse, I, I, no I, correlation. I there. don't think so. I don't okay. think. I'm going on a limb and say I don't think so. Okay, but in the Imagination Station, bringing hundreds of kids tomorrow too, right? Right. The entire sixth through twelfth grade of Toledo School for the Arts will be coming down to the viewing party. Um, we'll show them how to safely view. Um, like I said, their their drum corps is going to be doing a performance. They're going to have a big pep rally. Um, it should be a lot of fun. A lot of lot of energy. A lot of excitement with everybody. And lastly, there have uh, been some. <laughs> some bogus glasses circulating out there. There right? have been, yes. What, uh, maybe you can describe exactly what folks need to, uh, to be safe, right, yes. in terms of the glasses. Um, I would go to the NASA website. They have a list of preferred vendors. What, what NASA has done is ask people to provide certification that the filter material inside meets very stringent requirements for viewing of the sun. And you know, even, even with those requirements, it even says it right on the glasses here, is that you should not use these for more than three continuous minutes okay. while observing. You know, take a, give and your eyes a break. That's about the lips of the total eclipse anyway, right? Uh, some two and a half to three minutes? <laughs> well, in totality. Oh, okay. But you know, the, the actual <laughs> event will last uh, you know, a couple hours right, as, right. as the moon slowly right. crawls across the right. face of the sun. So definitely, you know, be careful with the glasses. Make sure you have ones that are on that approved vendor list. Mm. Okay. Anybody can print ISO, anybody can print you know, words on a piece of Are you going to be able to sleep tonight? The, the physicist, <laughs> the chief scientist, the exhibits I, uh, coordinator? I think so. I think station. so. I, I'll be able to get a good sleep because we're starting early, I think, with you guys around 4.30. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be up there early. Well, there will be a long day tomorrow. It will be. Right? And speaking of which, we've got you covered. Monday, tomorrow, 13 ABC, all over everything for all things Eclipse. We're broadcasting live from the affirmation, uh, aforementioned Imagination Station during Action News at noon. Our team will be down there as well at 4.30 with Carl. You're going to be, so you have to get up what time tomorrow, Carl, to oh. get into work? Uh, 3.30. Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's followed by a two-hour presentation from ABC News at 2 o'clock. Head of the CW, CW 13. Diane and I will be at the Imagination Station bring you an hour-long great solar eclipse celebration. See an encore of that special at 7 o'clock on 13 ABC. And Carl Nelson, thank you yeah. for coming in. Thank you. And adding your expertise. Yeah. We appreciate it it's very be much. be a cool day. And every weekend, just about, uh, here on 13 ABC Action News. Back on Conklin & Company in just a minute.